Welcome to the farms.com uh, marketing school video series. This video series being sponsored by the Cal brand seeds uh, to educate producers and farmers about grain commodity marketing. Well today in this fifth video uh, we're going to talk about the USDA demand and supply balance sheets also known as the crop production reports or the WASDE reports world agriculture supply demand estimates reports. Uh, so we're going to try to give you some insight into the past and what the future may bring and what to actually look for what really matters so the first thing we need to know is how do we find this report well the, the what you can do is if you open up a web browser and you type in google.com you click on that and then you type in WASD w-a-s-d-e and it'll take you to this website and it's the USDA website where you can find that monthly crop production report. And you can see here in the circle that I, I've highlighted, um, that's the current report for February of 2011. And it comes in both a PDF, an XML, or an Excel file format. The report is released at 7.30 a.m. Central or 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time every month. There's also a March Planning Intentions report that comes out at the end of June, sorry, end of March, and a June Acres report that comes out at the end of June. And then in between that we get these quarterly grain stocks report. But today we're just focused on these monthly uh, WASD reports. Uh, and you can see uh, that if you uh, move to the right here, uh, there's the under the announcements and events, you can also click on the WASD release dates, uh, which is just under, also shown under the uh, current uh, monthly production report. So you got the dates, uh, so the next date, release date for 2011 is March uh, 10th, April 8th, May 11th, June 9th, July 12th, August 11th, September 12th, October 12th, November 9th, and December 9th. Now, once you've um, uh, clicked on either the PDF, XML, or Excel file format, you'll see uh, the current report, and it typically the USDA will start to um, explain in detail the current domestic and global supply-demand situation. And it starts with wheat, then it's followed by coarse grains, also known as corn, oil seeds, includes soybeans, sugar, and livestock. Uh, now, you can also, on that same report, just under the release dates, you can get the historical reports. And these historical reports, and this is the way uh, the reports show up, can go all the way back to uh, 1970s. And in fact, it goes as far back as 1973, or 38 years. Now, let's give you an example of what to look for. We'll start off with corn. Um, you can see from uh, this chart here, this is the USDA balance sheet. Now, in order to find this balance sheet, what you got to do is, is click on the particular month you're looking for, uh, go back to the year you're looking for, so it's a month, a year, and then you're looking for that US supply uh, U.S. grain feed and corn uh, supply use. Once you get to that particular page, this is what you'll see is this balance sheet. And what you're particularly looking for in any given year really is that ending stocks number. Uh, we'll get to some of those other numbers, but really this is the number, and you can see 95.96. Uh, corn ending stocks uh, in that U.S. drought year got as low as um, 317 million bushels which was a SOX use ratio of 4.5%. Corn futures peaked at 545 of that year. Uh, if we go back to, if we move forward to 07, 08, again in that similar corn balance sheet, you can see ending stocks hit a low in June of that year, 08, at 673 million, or a SOX use ratio of 5.4%. By January of 2009, that same SOX to use ratio jumped to 1.790, and futures, um, in June of 08, peaked at 7.65 a bushel, dropped by 4.65 back to $3 a bushel within a period of about six to seven months. In fact, in 2010-11 now, we got uh, corn and ink stocks down to a low of 675 million bushels. Uh, futures just today, actually, uh, I'm speaking on uh, February um, 22nd overnight uh, futures for corn July hit a high of 738 and three quarters per bushel. Uh, this is a stocks use ratio of 5.0 percent, just barely above the 1937 Great Depression of 4.5 percent as well. Um, and so 
the ending stock's really being driven by a few factors uh, on the demand side. There's feed, there's food, there's ethanol exports. You can see some of the numbers here. Um, exports get a lot of press and attention, but they're really a small piece of the pie. Food exports, uh, food, sorry, feed and ethanol really make up a bigger part of that pie. In fact, as much as approaching 5 billion bushels or more, uh, ethanol has gone from 1.3 billion uh, in 0405 to about 4.9 billion in 1011. So a big increase there. So, um, but these are just the factors that demand uses that's driving that ending stocks number. Let's look at another example. In the soybean example here, you can see that uh, ending stocks for 0708 got as low as uh, um, what, 125. Again, you have to scroll down into that um, monthly report. When you get to uh, US soybean supply and use, you'll find this balance sheet. And this is a stock's use ratio of 4.1%. Soybean futures peaked in 08 at 1663 a bushel. The 30 year low in soybean stock's use ratio is 1.1% in June of 1979. In fact, this year we got ending stocks down to about 140 million. Again, a 4.2% stock's use ratio, very, very low. Um, again, one of the factors that's causing that lower ending stocks number is uh, the word or the letter C, which also stands for China. Uh, China has been a major exporter uh, or a big player of, of a buyer of U.S. soybeans since 0708. Brazil and Argentina have also become big players on the production side since 0708, number two, number three, respectively ranked. Um, so knowing what's happening in South America is also important. So USDA will constantly update you on those numbers in this monthly crop production report. And let's not forget China on the production side. They are the biggest wheat producer around the globe. So in summary, USDA monthly crop production reports are very important as they can have a huge impact on where grain prices will move in the future. Whether you agree with the numbers or not, that's what the market trades. Learn how to play the game. Um, at the end of the day, it's what's important. Okay, so understand that once the USDA starts to move those ending stocks lower, they will continue to do that for many months and vice versa. So if, if all of a sudden the number starts to reverse itself and go back up, so if we're at a low point and it starts to move back up, the USDA will continue to do that for many, many months and that will dictate where those grain prices are going. So uh, knowing what to look for and having some idea of the past in USDA reports can help a farmer become more successful marketer. It's never perfect. We can manage the risk, manage the volatility, we can't predict the future. In our next video series, we'll look at global ec economies and what impact they can have on grain prices. Thanks for joining me today and spending some time. I hope I've said some light and insight on USD monthly crop production reports. Until next time, thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing you in our next video series. Take care.